Hey guys, this is the Redditor Editor. I'm coming at you guys with another Elden Ring room farm. And as you can see right here, we're doing the bird farm. Now the bird farm, it's really good. It's even good for really late game. And if you have a gold scarab, you'll be getting 13,000 every single time that you do this. And it takes like 15 to 20 seconds to do it. Uh, without the gold scarab, you'll be getting like 11,000. And it's good for even late game. Very good for mid game and extremely good for early game. The only uh, requirements is you have to at least have beaten Margit and beaten Godric. If you're good on that, then you're good to go. The rest of this video is going to be me showing you how to get there and how to do it. It's extremely simple to do. Uh, it just will take you a while to set it up. That's the only thing. But yeah, I'm going to let the video play out. I hope you guys do enjoy it. If you do, then drop a like. If you do not, then drop a dislike. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey guys, this is the Better Editor. I'm coming at you guys with a uh, another rune farm in the game of Elden Ring. And this one is going to be... It's sort of an early game rune farm that you can use. It's also very, very good. Uh, especially if you have an early character or even mid game, this will give you a whole lot. It'll give you a lot of souls every time you do their runes. Right? If I say souls accidentally, I mean runes. If you don't exactly know, they're called souls in the Dark Souls game. This method, you're going to be shooting this bird, and it's going to be falling off of a cliff. And every time you shoot it and it falls off of a cliff, you're going to get around 11,000 souls or runes, unless you have uh, the scarab talisman or whatever it's called. Uh, and that'll give you a little bit more, or if you've eaten any golden foots or whatever they're called, you'll get more from that as well. But, uh, just the base payout is around 11k that I'm getting. And you can get that done, like, roughly every 10 to 15 to 20 seconds. It, it, it's really fast. Uh, the only requirements for this, I'm going to list out the requirements, so listen closely, is you want to have a bow like some sort of bow or crossbow anything that shoots a projectile for mage builds i heard the uh what is it called the boulder roll or the rock roll something like that that spell works pretty well with the samurai build you spawn with a long bow like you already have that in your inventory and it shoots for like far enough to hit the guy uh, you do have to be kind of accurate and lead your shot pretty well to hit him but other than that uh, there's really not much to it, but to get to this farm, you gotta go through a lot of stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and say it right now. If you killed the white mask guy at the start of the game when you first come to the first step, I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna have to find an alternative way to get to this location. But if you haven't killed him, then you're good. You can do this method and it'll work just fine. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to do. So, it's story-wise, you need to at least have beaten Godric. Because if you haven't beaten Godric yet, you can't get the specific thing to happen that you need. There's a woman in the round table hold that is near these two gigantic nasty looking fingers. Her name's Enya. And you need to have access to her. And I don't think her door is opened unless you have killed Godric. And also, Homeboy with the White Mask, we'll talk about that. We'll get into it, and I'm going to slow down for you. So, if you have beaten Godric, then you're good to go. Uh, your next step would be to go to the Round Table Hold and talk to Enya near the Two Fingers a couple times. you got to talk to her a couple times, and you'll give her the, the Rune Arc that you got from Godric. Or, it was something. It was something that you got from Godric after killing him that you're going to give her. You might want to press Y or Triangle a couple times while you're talking to her to make sure that it really works. And she'll say the right dialogue and stuff. Then you want to go to the Blood Rose Church and talk to the White Mask NBC or in NPC. He'll be to the right of the doorway. Now, if you go here and he's not here, you need to make sure you did the previous things that I said. And when you go talk to him, uh, he's roughly around right here on the map. By the way, it's north of where you kill Godric. You go through this like swampy area or whatever, and he'll be over there. And once you talk to him. He'll give you five bloody fingers. Now, these are used to invade other people's worlds, and you need to use them three times, okay? The, it doesn't matter the outcome as long as you end up in someone else's world. If you die, you kill the person, or you disconnect, or you kill yourself, whatever the case is, you just need to do this three times. Every time I did it, I was just double teamed, so... Or triple teams. There was one of them I got triple teamed. I don't have footage of that, but I wish I did. It was just me versus three people. I don't know what the fun is about that, that people just wait on one invader and there's three of them. I have no idea what they're getting from that, but that's not something I would do. But once you have done that, then after you've done that three times, you're going to go talk to the guy that gave you the bloody fingers, which is going to be the White Mask NPC. I have no idea what his name is, so I'm just calling him White Mask NPC. Uh, but once you go talk to him again, he'll give you the Lord of Blood's Favor, which is just basically a piece of white paper. Uh, and then you're going to go to the Four Belfries, which is on the west side of the map. 
it's around where the Blood Rose Church is. So, like, you're going to go to the Blood Rose Church, travel west and then south a little bit, and there should be a way for you to get on top of this mountain. If you see that gigantic castle on top of a, uh, on top of a mountain, you're in the right direction. Go south of that. And you're going to go up a mountain, and then on the very tippy top of it, there's going to be a Lost Grace. And you're going to touch that, and then there's going to be a chest up there. You're going to open that chest, and there's going to be a key in that chest. And you're going to go back down the mountain, not very much though. The first tower you see on your way down the mountain, which is like right near the very top of it, uh, there's a teleporter there, and you can unlock it using the key that you just got from the chest earlier. Now, after you have activated that, you're going to go through the portal, and what it's going to do is it's going to place you at the place that you started the game at. And your goal here, if you haven't already, is you're going to kill the boss that kills you at the beginning of the game. Now, once you kill him, then you have access to the other part of the area. He's not too bad. You should be able to kill him pretty easily. Now, when he goes into a second phase, he deals a whole ton of damage, just depending on how what level you are. So just be very careful about that and just kill the guy. I first tried him, but he almost murdered me. I used all my flasks and I was one hit by the end of it. Uh, but once you get that done, then you're going to go to the actual room where you first spawn in, where you grab a finger to open the door to get to the first boss, uh, the quote-unquote first boss that you encounter. Uh, but once you get in there, you're going to go to a dead body that you grab the finger from at the very start of the game, and it's going to turn that white paper from white to red. And then you're just going to fast travel back near the Blood Rose Church, and you're going to go back to the white, the white mask NPC, and he'll give you, finally, the thing that you need to teleport to the place that you need to go for this farm. He's going to cut your finger, and you're going to press Y on him a couple more times, and you'll receive this thing called a Pure Blood Knight's Medal. And you're going to go in your inventory and click Use on that, and that's what's going to TP you to the area that you need to go for this chicken thing to fall off the map. Now, you're going to just follow where I go in this footage. Uh, there, be very careful. There's a lot of things that deal a whole ton of damage here, and then there's these gigantic skeletons that come out of the ground at the very start of the run here. Uh, but you're just going to be heading to a Lost Grace. doesn't take you very long to get there. It might take you a few tries. Uh, but once you get up there, you're going to uh, hit that Lost Grace. And then, and then, if you overlook this place, that is where that nasty-looking, decrepit bird is that you're going to be shooting uh, with a bow, uh, ideally, unless you're a mage build and have something to hit him. Be careful about where you're standing at, because if you stand where I stood at first, he just goes to the edge of it and doesn't move anymore. So you got to kind of go to the piece of rock that I went to and then shoot him, and he should just fall off the map. He should run over, fall off the map. Once he does fall off the map, a few seconds after he does, you'll get around 11,000 uh, runes, depending on what your talismans and upgrades are and stuff like that for that. And once that's over, then it's done. You can now do the farm. Once he falls off the map, you're going to go sit at the Lost Grace again, refresh the enemies, go back over to that area, shoot at him again. He'll fall off the map, then you just rinse and repeat. If you get low on arrows or whatever, then you're just going to head to the church north of the first step and you're going to talk to that trader there he looks like he's holding a fishing rod but to be honest with you I have no idea what this is it's like a drum attached to a long stick I have no idea what it is but you're going to talk to him and he's going to have arrows for sale they're 20 runes a piece they're pretty cheap and you can just I don't know how many you can hold in your inventory exactly but you can buy as many as you need from him uh, I don't know exactly how many he'll have though I'm sure his shop will refresh after every once in a while maybe I don't know if it works like other games but yeah that's pretty much it for the video if you guys did like this video then drop it a like if you dislike this video then drop it a dislike if you guys want to see more videos like this and go ahead and hit the sub button you will see more tried to make this video as fast as I could and as informative as possible because like every other video of this on YouTube is extremely long for whatever reason but yeah other than that stuff see you guys in the next one bye bye